everyone, my name is Giovanna Proens and today we're going to talk about practice problems week 9. In this problem we're going to build a simple Flask app to gain an understanding of how to use this framework. Just remember Flask is a framework where we can build a website. The Flask is a library in Python where we can build our, our website and we can create the pages using HTML, CSS and JavaScript as we saw in the previous week. In this problem we're going to build the website here. They kind of give us the step but I want to do this with you so you can understand what's going on in each step of our problem because the workflow of building any website is kind of this way in here. All right, so let's start. First, I already downloaded here the folder and if we see in here, the folder doesn't contain any file and we're going to start building the files according to the order in here. Let's start with the first part. The first part, we're going to create our file app.py and in this file app.py is where we contain all the logic that is going on behind our website. Just to remember, our website contains the front end and the back end. The front end is everything that is visual, so we already learned what is the visual parts, that is HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And the backend is where we're going to manipulate the data according to what we want. For example, if we want to display a message in the screen, if we want to get the credentials when we're doing login and logout, we have to manipulate the data underneath the website and it's in here in our app.py. So to start, I'm going to create this file called app.py here inside of our app flask. I'm going to create app.py and I'm going to paste this file, this message that we just copy. What's going on? In the first line, we are importing the library of flask. So here we're importing from flask everything we can use in flask. Flask. And in our line three, we are creating a variable called app. This variable called app is telling our code that this file here will contain all the structure that Flask uh, contains. Okay, so it's allowing us to create our website in this part. Then we have this decorator at app.root and then we have a slash. This means that every time we have in our URL here the slash, we're gonna see the page that we are trying to see in here. And here, what is linked with this uh, slash root is our index function. The index function is only telling us to return hello world. So let me see one add extra thing. This will create an HTML page and say this. So let's see how it's going on. If I run here flask run and click enter, it will give us a link. You can click and we will be able to see the page. As we can see here, we are displaying hello world in our screen and here we in the slash part we're displaying this if i put slash giovanna it will display a message saying that this root doesn't exist because we just have so far one function that is the function slash that is displaying this hello world page so far so good this is pretty much what we have in here we have a function that is linked with a url and in this url we're going to display what is in this side inside this function and so far we only have the hello world now let's do the next step in our next step, we're going to start building now our HTML files. First, we're going to create a folder called templates and inside of these templates, we're going to add all the HTML files we're going to have in the project. Why we should do this? This is one structure that Flex is expecting, but you can think about that if you put all the HTML files in a folder, this will be more organized so you can see where's all your HTML files in there and you can manipulate that. So in here, I'm going to create a file called a folder called templates. And inside of this templates folder, I will create the first file that will be our our layout.html and we will see in details what this layout.html will do. Here I'm going to create layout.html and I'm going to paste exactly what we're seeing here in the screen, what we copy. Here we're creating the structure of HTML that we saw in on week 8. We're saying that the language of our website will be English. We have the head here and we're giving the title hello flask. If you remember the title here would say what is the title of our tab and in our body we're saying to display the, hel the h1 hello flask and we have this curly bracket percentage block body and block. Here, this line 9, it's a Jinja uh, notation. This Jinja syntax will allow us to write it down things inside of this block body and we're gonna be able to reuse this layout in other files. So instead of always creating this doc type HTML, HTML, head, title, we don't need to add this in the other files we're gonna create in HTML. We can just reuse our layout and start writing what we want in our other files of HTML. And we're gonna do this. Now let's create an index.html and we will see how it works. So here, I'm going to create an index.html. And as I mentioned, we don't need to write all this structure again. We just need to extend from our layout. So do you see here we're saving up some lines of code and saving time for us because we don't need to write all the steps over again. So this extends means that we are all this file index will contain all this data, all this information we have in here and it will apply in this part. And this paragraph next, we will put a form here and get some post action. This paragraph here in your, our line four will be inside here of our line nine. So this is a great way of saving us some time and organizing 
organizing more our code. Now let's see this working in our page. So if we scroll down here, they tell us to render the template. So every time we want to display an HTML file in our app.py, we have to return render template via render template. And we're going to say what is the template we want to render. So in our case is index.html. Okay, then we need to import here this two functions from Flask, otherwise it will crash our code saying that this doesn't exist. So now, as we can see, it changed color because now we have these functions working. Let's see how it works in our page. So now if I refresh, we're supposed to see an H1 with the paragraph, and this is exactly what we're seeing. Here, this is our index.html that is displaying hello Flask, and where is the hello Flask? Is imported from our layout.html. Instead of returning the index, if I return just layout, we would see layout we would see in here just the hello world, hello flask in here, because our layout only contains this hello flask. But since we want to render our index.html, we're going to see what is inside the, the layout plus what is inside our index. So this is pretty good. Let me go back the way it was. This is where we are so far. And as we can see in here, this is all our get method. What is the get method? In the future, we're going to see better how the posts work. But the get method, we're getting the page and we're seeing here. So the get method is displaying what we're seeing here in our screen. Every time we're working with the get, we want to show up a page for us. Okay, this is a good way of you to think. And how about the post method? The post method, we're going to get the data from the form. So we're going to get the data from the user. This is where we can interact with. And how does it work? Let's see this animation. When using the post method, our aim is to send data to the server for processing. To achieve this, we must first create an HTML form that will allow users to input data. Inside the form, each input field should have a name attribute, which is used to identify where the data will be stored. When the user clicks the submit button, the data is sent to our app.py file. To retrieve this data and use it in our Python code, we need to check if the request method is a post method, and then create a variable to store the data using the request form.get function. This variable allows us to manipulate the data entered by the user in our HTML form. So with what we saw in mind, let's start applying and understand better what's going on. As I mentioned, in the beginning of our code, we have to create the form where we can get the data from the user. And here is the form as we can see. So let's copy and paste in our index.html and then we can see what's going on. I'm going to remove this paragraph in here and I'm going to put the form in there. Let me just fix the indentation. Great. Now if I refresh, we will see that now we have this message. What is your favorite color? Here we have a drop down and a submit button. And let's understand what are those in the text. Here, every time we're working with a form, we need to give the action. The action is where we're going to send the data. So 